Hello guys, welcome to Klaus Gaming. Today we're going to check out FIA The Awakening. This is a game that came through Steam Greenlight. It also had an unsuccessful Kickstarter. It's hard to describe what this game exactly is, but I'd say it's a mix between a strategy game, a roguelike, and a card game, actually. So there's a lot of mechanics in it, and we will play it now for a little bit, and I'll try and explain some of the mechanics that I know about. I really think this menu screen here is awesome. So this is the village over here, where we live, and in the woods there are monsters, and everything is very dangerous, but it's also alluring. As you see the light here, the little kid is drawn toward the light. And that's the uh, game in a nutshell. You are a guard and you're the patron of a village. There's one over here. And this is your people, the last survivors. And you have to make them survive for as long as you possibly can. And that's why it's a survival game. So let's get started. When you first start the game, it'll uh, randomly choose two guards for you. So for me, it chose these two that I can choose between. The rest of them uh, can be unlocked during gameplay. So we will play with Varrock, the God of Sun and Heavenly Fire. And uh, he's at level 2. And uh, he can gain more experience and get to 3 and 4 and 5 in levels. And X XP carries over from game to game. So the more you play with Varrock, the more of this you will unlock. And of course also you will unlock more, more guards as you go through the game. There's some gameplay options here. Village focus, warriors, gatherers, craftsmen. You only have one village. And that's the village you're trying to uh, build and have survive through the game. You're trying to build this village into a beacon of light in the dark times for humankind. Warriors is a, a focus on soldiers, gatherers on gatherers and craftsmen on craftsmen. So this is the most uh, fighting skilled uh, villagers that we can have. We'll go with warriors, so we'll be good at fighting the monsters. World size. It can be small, normal, or huge, or extreme. And the world is always randomly generated. So in that way it's also very much like a roguelike or a civilization or something like that. And difficulty, normal. There's only one difficulty right now, so we'll play on normal. So here we are in the game. This is our village right here. Ostoya. And the first thing you want to do is click into it. And manage your people. So you see we have some resources nearby. We have wood and vegetable. So we can start gathering that. You see here is uh, free gathering and free crafting and eight gathering and two crafting and so forth. So what you want to do is put some people on this job here. Available tasks, regular wood with a bit of effort. It can be crafted into something useful or burned as fuel. So we will uh, make that a task to gather wood. And then we'll uh, pick this guy here, send him. And if you click down here, you can also make the task uh, to gather more wood than one. But you can also just make the task repeat by clicking this icon here. And we'll have some gathering of vegetables. We'll have her do that. Kvetsuslava, so you can see they have these uh, Slavic names, all of them pretty much. And the... Uh, Monsters and so forth in the game is based on the Slavic mythology. Alright, so now we have some people gathering. We can also craft and craft clothes. So this is the workbench and we have some primary material, secondary material and catalysts. that will pro produce a different result. So here we can either use uh, yarn or we can use leather. And I think leather is, uh, is the superior material then will produce this uh, leather shirt it may not be easy to get out of but it certainly looks cool yeah it also has some armor so we'll confirm that job and we will put anya to work on that and then we can also construct but we don't really have anything that we can construct at all here only this pasture but we don't have the materials for that so we'll head back out in the menu here. There's research, and we have one advancement point available for now. And you can spend it on gathering tree, or crafting, or constructing. So you can see if you were to build a smithy, you would really uh, <laughs> need a lot of materials to build it. Or watchtower. Or herbalist hut. 
some crafting. We could uh, craft something like staves. Research that. Or jewelry. Or one-handed axes. There's a lot of options. And you can equip your vi villagers with these things when you craft them. We can research amber. It'll add 10 units of this resource to your settlement's inventory and reveal at least one place where it can be gathered. And that's pretty much the same for all of the resources here. It will, it will reveal on the map where we can get them. And it'll also give us some of the actual resource. So let's research light armors for now. This up here is the day and night cycle. It's daytime right now. And then it becomes morning, noon, afternoon, evening, midnight and dawn. And at midnight and dawn, in the night, the monsters are more likely to attack and random events can happen. And this is a expedition right here. We just have one right now. We can take a look at that. It has six members. And it has a bunch of equipment as well. We can see that all of this is equipped. Amber runestone using old dwarven techniques. Runestones can give magic protection. All right, so let's put that on uh, Slabomir over here. And we can also change his name if we want. So this is the equipment that we have and it's already equipped on our guys over here. And some of them are soldiers and some of them are more crafting oriented people. But that's our expedition. And we can at any time we could go into the village and make another expedition. If you look at the inventory of the village here, you'll see we have a kit also that has not grown up yet, but will and can later be used as a productive member of society. So let's select our expedition and then we'll uh, click this walking icon and go up here because there's something we can explore. Then we can click on this icon and the green one that's blinking and search the location and we get this event. Stumble across some ruins of an old city engulfed in a mist and mystery. So let's search it. You open one of the buildings, a strange looking stone and metal built affair, and you hear a clunking noise, then a blunt hot foot. Within seconds, the streets of the city are filled with walking skeletons, so we have to fight. You have started a challenge with three skeletons. How do you want to resolve it? And you always have the option to auto resolve, or you can begin combat. And you can see uh, skills used in, in, in this challenge. We have some defense, offense, first action, support allies, protect ally, counter offensive, counter tactic, confuse, and weapon effects. And to show you how combat works, if you if you actually pick to do the combat yourself, I'll just do that. It's a card game. There's sort of a preparation phase first, and then a fighting phase after that. So what we want to do is uh, is put down our fighters and you can see the uh, shield here is the actual hit points and the uh, sword is how much damage the card does so the one with the most hit points is uh, Adelaida so I'll put it down here first because then she's more likely to, uh, to take some of the hits and this is the amount of cards that we can use right now cards to play so I have one left now that I can play and these are the support cards and they'll uh, be able to add different abilities to the cards that you have already played. Like Confuse, opponent's most recently played offensive card loses its attack in the first fight phase. If the card's level is higher than Confuse level, a card played earlier will be the skill's target. So I'll, I'll use that, so that the skeleton will not be able to attack. And that was the last card we could play, so let's pass the turn. So these skeletons are actually quite tough. They have 19 hit points and, uh, and a lot of damage. So it's not an easy fight. So we'll confuse that one as well. And then we'll play Slavomir. Oh, I don't have any cards left, so I have to pass the turn. We'll put down Slavomir. And Grashinja. And support ally. 
on her because she doesn't have that uh, much attack. End the turn. So we just attack the skeleton there. We took out two of them. Unfortunately, one of the skeletons also took out one of our people. So we have gained uh, these materials here and an axe and lost at a layer. Take your loot and exit the ruins. We also got to gain some XP and some research. And the XP carries over to the next game if you play with the same guard. So now we have some wounded. You see by the heart down here. We'll take a look at our team. Adelaide is uh, gravely wounded. It's zero out of nine. So she's not in fact dead, but she is, uh, she's gravely wounded and she can die uh, later on. So we should bring her back to the village and drop her off there. Let's look at the inventory here. So here she is. We'll drop her off in the village. And then we'll bring uh, the brother instead into the expedition. Yes, we can drop off these materials here as well that we picked up in the expedition. We also got some uh, bones there from the fight, I think. Oh, we shouldn't drop off all of the meat. Probably need to eat. There we go. So we'll head back out. Now we have to wait for the next turn. Got a Lycan up here. Then we are ready to move again. So we should move up here and check out what that's about. You can also see that there's a group of spiders over here. So let's search the ruins. Search the buildings and discover a supply store still intact. You have gained sandstone, vegetables, and elven wood. Take your loot and exit the ruins. More XP and more research. So you can see that resource gathering is a, is a very big part of this game. It's really mostly about resource management also. Because when you bring someone out on the expedition, obviously they can't defend the city at the same time. And the city will get attacked later on. So it's sort of a... You're sort of juggling who to send and when to send them and how to get the resources into the city and what to build there and so forth. And sometimes you will have other options to resolve than combat options. You can do a mini game for other ways of resolving the, uh, the encounter or whatever happens. I'll pass the turn. All right, so now we got attacked by eight bees. And I'll just choose to auto-resolve this. So you can see that uh, she's gravely wounded, but we gained free uh, amber. An unusually big and strange looking black rooster was seen perusing your uh, village barn. We suspect this may be a cropsy, a domesticated field demon who can bring great fortune to his host. But beware, if it deems you to be a bad farmer, it may inst instead damage your crops or play nasty tricks. So we can either leave an opening in your barn wall for the Cropsy to come in and out easily, or we could shut the barn tight, no need for tricky demons. Let's open the barn door. The Cropsy seems happy with your work, and so your people bring in more crops from the fields, and your gardens give more fruit. So we got some extra resources out of that. And that's one of the uh, events that can happen. And they happen randomly, and you never really know the outcome, but it can be influenced by the attributes of your people. So let's go up here and explore, or maybe we should go back and, and drop off the wounded first. So move into the city, see what we can do in here. Drop off her and take Adelaide back, she's all healed up. Drop off the stone and stuff. So 
let's move out our expedition again. Move down here. So here we have another random event. A figure of a beautiful woman, dawn and flowers and leaves, appears before you as a daydream. A sweet smell of spring flowers and young lambs follow her and everywhere she steps grass grows greener. And yet, as her foot lifts again, anything that lived with us, her eyes are filled with sorrow. Okay, it's a really nice painting. Um, hello my lady, are you okay? That's one option. Stay back, whatever you are, that's option two. Or three is just to attack. So we don't really have uh, anything that looks like a great option here. So let's try and, uh, and just ask, hello my lady, how are you? I seek not to do you harm, human child, I am but a lost god, fallen, stripped of my power to give life, robbed of my people, tainted forever by this rotting disease that is the darkness. Sylvia was my name, but fear not, my curse is my own, and whatever vile force set it upon me, it cannot command me to do harm to another. So let's say, right, so what are you doing here? I once was what you may call a god, but I am no more, for what is a god, if not a creature who serves his children, but I have none. I betrayed the light, and now I must serve penance. But now let us speak of your wounds, children. And let's ask for penance, for what? I took pity on some children of the night, and told them of a way to keep the sun away. I didn't know it will last this long, I didn't know it will hurt this much. I will not speak of it anymore, the burden is mine, it is your injuries I wish to discuss, else I, may, else I must leave now. Our wounds, why? I cannot offer to heal you as I once could, yet I can offer you a gamble. As part of the curse, my healing touch now carries the risk of a curse. So you have two roads to take if you wish to play. One, I shall heal you, but you will likely become cursed. Or two, if you have those who meddle with the magic arts, they can attempt to guard against the taint. But beware, if they fail, the price may be high. Pray understand, I do this not out of joy, but only to help such as I can. So again, we have two options. We don't want to play with magic, but we need the healing. Let's do it. Or we would rather not try at all. Thanks. Yeah, we'd rather not try because we are not injured at all. We, uh, we uh, dropped off the injured in the, uh, in the village. So let's just leave. A wise choice, I suppose. I do wish I could help more, but oh, alas, I must keep walking. Be well, my friends. And we leave. Got one XP out of that. So we can't... Uh, we can actually move over here, so let's do that. And let's pass the turn. So here we have an, uh, another event. A ghost of a hanged man is seen in your village, haunting your people's dreams. He is seen coming always from the same direction and returning there after several hours of haunting. Your people wake uneasy every night and some become cursed. Your scouts soon mark a possible location of the ghost's home. Okay, so we can only uh, use this option. Okay, perhaps investigating it will stop the haunting. Gain one XP. But this is where the hanged man is, so I guess we need to go investigate that. So let's move over there. Can we get closer? No, not in that turn, so let's pass the turn. So now it's uh, getting dusk. I move over to the hangman here and check out the the scene. So now we can press this. You find the ruins of what must have been a small settlement, but it looks abandoned for at least a decade. You see the hangman floating aimlessly wailing at the sky. The souls of those who died of hanging, especially self-inflicted, are known to become damned like this, but there could be a way to help. So we can either look for clues of what happened to the hanged man, or we could say, nah, the best way to get rid of ghost problem is good steel, attack his ghost. Let's look for clues. You look around the abandoned settlement and find several skeletons of people with their heads severed as well as many funeral pyres that look very makeshift and rushed. At the center of the village you discover an oak tree with the hanged man's skeletal body still swinging from a branch. So let's take the body down before checking it. As you search the body, the ghost appears again, but this time without the noose around his neck. Instead, you see a well-built middle-aged man in a wide-brimmed hat with a large book and crossbow at his side. The ghost seems more coherent now as it speaks to you. So you have come good. So we can either ask, are you the one that cursed our people? Or we could say, yes, we have come, you haunted our village for many nights. 
now and we seek to release you from this fate. Let's say the uh, this second option here. It was not me. Well, not strictly. I can only hold this form for a short time, but I will revert back to the anguished deformity that is the hanged man. Driven by instinct alone, I will seek out life and haunt it, desperately trying to seek aid. Many would have slain my spirit by now. My thanks to your patience. So we have two options. Yes, well, we did think about killing you, but it seems rather redundant when it comes to ghosts. And then there is the curse you left. Or the second one. What good is killing a ghost anyway, eh? What happens to you guys if you are defeated? Let's just say the first one. Indeed, it is somewhat redundant for you. I have no true answer for what happens to us, except that we come back with less and less of ourselves left. Every time we are slain, we lose a part of our soul until there is nothing but an angry shell left. All right, so let's say the second option. Enough sharing. How do we help you to get the curse off our people? I'm afraid I do not know for sure how to lift your curse. I am fading again and soon will become the hanged man again. So I will tell you this, read my diary and find a way to rest my spirit. Or find another way to banish me from this fate. If you do, I promise I will try and lift the curse. It looked like he wanted to say more, but his ghostly body dissolved and changed back into the hanged man. So again, we can either just kill him or we could look for a diary. Let's look for the diary. Inside the man's coat pocket you find a note, or rather what looks like a page torn out of the diary. So let's read that carefully. The curse of the Striga takes hold quickly. Within days I saw signs of these good people falling to the darkness. Only I knew what had to be done and God helped my soul for it. I had no other recourse but to kill those who were taken and those who stubbornly stood in my way. I had hoped to finish the job and return to you my daughter. But alas, I can feel the curse upon my soul. I can hear the voice of my soon-to-be mistress calling me at night. And every night the voice becomes sweeter. Soon I will not have the will to resist, so I must act now, even knowing my soul will be damned among the wretched. If you shall ever find this place, I needed you to know my true fate. Alright, check for other information. As you examine the rope, you see it was weaved with silver, and on the ground you see a pentagram drawn with rock salt and poppy seeds, or at least that's what they could have been. All known repellents for dark magic and creatures of the night. The hanged man appears next to you and points to a map attached to the page. You see several settlement marked and one signed home. Alright, let's take the map. You remembered a book and crossbow on the ghost and so you search for it near the body. You discover both objects buried under a pile of stones. So we got this crossbow here. And it seems that uh, Barbara gained some insight into folklore. So let's lay the body to rest and then leave. We gain 3 XP and, and a research point. And we also have this on the map now that we can go and uh, explore further. Let's see if we can use this crossbow that we got. It's right here, it's a ritual crossbow. So we'll just give it to uh, Vaklau because he's not carrying any weapon at all. Alright guys, that's the game. Fear the Awakening. You run your village trying to survive and most of the game you uh, spend exploring and gathering resources and researching and trying to not die in the inhospitable lands and see how long you can last and you can unlock the other guards to play with and the map is procedurally generated every time and there's about 200 dynamic events that can happen to you along the way so the game is sort of a mix between a roguelike a strategy game and a card game so if you think this looks interesting and something you might want to play, the game will be released on Steam today. I hope this gave you a good idea of the mechanics and how the game works. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you all next time.